Hey guys, this is the system so far. This is the carbonated water output. This is the water input, and this is the CO2 input. Right now it's on a scale, just so we know how much water is in there. So we don't put too much water in, because if we put too much water in, then it uh, reduces the amount of carbon uh, dioxide exposure to the water. So we want to keep it around 50, 52 pounds of water in order to get a nice carbonated beverage out of the canister. So again, this is the output for the carbonated water. This is the input for the water. We had to get a specialized lid for the Cornelius keg uh, with another input. And then this is the carbonated water input. Now, I'll just show you a quick demo of this thing in operation. As you can see, it's quite carbonated. Oh, and it tastes great. All right, now let me just show you uh, what we have in the water closet. So, here are the two hoses coming from the keg and they go into the water closet. There's the hourglass filtration system that we set up and there's the CO2 canister right there with plenty of CO2 in it and it's regulated at roughly 50 psi output for CO2 and there's the pump on the floor. That is a 12 volt roughly 5 amp pump it can push up to 70 PSI. Uh, the reason we chose the 70 PSI pump was because this uh, CO2 regulator has an off gas pressure. We're not sure exactly what that is. I couldn't find any information about it on the regulator's document page. But if the pressure exceeds a certain amount, there's a valve on the back which will automatically off gas. And we didn't want to have it continuously off gassing. So I chose a PSI that was slightly above what the regulator could push. And yep. Yeah. It seems to be working pretty well as far as that goes. Um, we are having a few issues with getting the right balance of water to CO2, as I mentioned before. That's why it's on the scale. So, yeah, we're going to have to uh, find a way of getting that just right. So the imbalance seems to be caused by either too much water getting into the tank uh, or too much CO2 getting into the tank. So, yeah, if the water gets too high, It'll actually start pushing water back up into the uh, CO2 pipe, or CO2 input. And if the water is too low, then the CO2 will displace the water, and then we just end up with a bad ratio, and we're losing CO2 or wasting CO2. So we're probably going to have to get like a uh, inline flow limiter for the CO2, or something along those lines. Maybe we'll have a uh, pressure-sensitive switch that uh, once it reaches that 52 pounds, the motor will get shut off by an inline switch that controls the voltage to the pump. We're not sure exactly if we're going to implement that one or not. Uh, we were trying to use aluminum foil and saran wrap to measure the capacitance of the tank, but the uh, capacitance shift was m very minor, so it was very difficult uh, to really get an accurate read. We had a uh, two nanofarads when it was full and two nanofarads when it was empty. So if it does have a capacitive change, it's very, very small and that would be very difficult to measure. So yeah, we're not going to use that method. So yeah, we're going to be implementing that change and also we have a system to cool the keg. This is a air conditioner we took out of a water cooler. So here's the compressor, this is the heat expulsion uh, coil, this is a cooling coil, and there's another cooling coil underneath here as well. So, yeah, that's going to be another project for another day, but, yep, yeah, I got that for free as well. But, uh, yeah, I might post a video of tearing this all apart later. Alright guys, take care.